this is a fantastic option at $40. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to find something with as much flexibility and versatility as this. Okay, so today I'm reviewing my scanning setup and I'm gonna go over a few different options that I've kind of been using throughout the years and then what I'm currently using now. Now, one that I'm gonna go over I think is by far the best bang for your buck budget option out there if you're going to be scanning your own film. So I've been doing a lot of work to my film developing setup, scanning and all that stuff. I have a dryer over there. I have an SP2000 scanner, which we'll get into a little bit later. And one of those things I wanted to look into was what I'm using to DSLR scan my negatives. So in the past, I've done a video and I've talked about how I used to use things like the Digitalizer from Lamography, and of course then I switched to the 3D printed molds. So those are decent affordable options, but some of the downsides to those are things like with the Digitalizer from Lamography, your negatives are very close to the surface of whatever your lighting element is. Also, you are limited with how many negatives you can put on there. So I think for 120, depending on the size you're using, six by six, uh, I think you can put three into that file or into that frame. If it's six by seven, I think you only get two. And if it's six by nine, you only get one negative in there. Uh, so you have to cut out your film. And then if you're storing it into like plastic sheets, it gets really annoying when you have all these odd sizes and you can't place them quite right. Uh, it just becomes quite a hassle. And then of course you have to cut every time before you can scan those negatives. Taking off, switching out the negatives, putting back on, realigning it again, adjusting the whole slider every time you had to take a shot of a different negative. Way too time consuming. If you're just doing a roll or two, it's not a big deal. The other option that I started doing was the 3D printed option. Now that also works pretty decently well. Uh, downsides to that are of course it's 3D printed. So if you don't have one, you have to find someone who does or pay to have it printed for you. And then of course, after that, uh, you have to make sure it's smoothed out, sanded, there's no rough edges or anything that are gonna cut your film. And then it's in two pieces. So you have to then glue those pieces together and make sure it sits perfectly flat. And then that gap isn't quite as small as it is because you have to leave room and the tolerances for the expanding of plastic or the contracting, I can't remember how it works with 3D printing, things like that. And so it's not gonna be perfect, that gap. And so your film might turn or might not be perfectly level. But also then again, you know, it shifts very easy being so lightweight and plastic and then you need to cover the rest of the light source so you don't get any extra splash of lights in there to really haze or fog up or kind of mess with your scanning method. The benefit of the 3D printed versions is they do sit higher off of your lighting platform, which means you're gonna get a little bit better results. So where am I getting that information from? I'll give you a reference that kind of describes it in a much better way than I can, uh, but just know the distance your negative is from the light source also plays into if you get vignetting or hot spots or anything like that. Of course, that also depends on what light source you're using. So I've started to scan negatives other than my own and developing film other than my own. And so in the process of doing that and making sure I have a very high standard and I get the best results possible, I of course want to upgrade my scanning method. So I started looking around and a brand actually reached out to me, ironically at the same time, asking me if I wanted to try out their scanning platform. Now I'm not paid for this, they don't have any say, I wasn't required to make a video about this at all, but I did think it was a very, ingenious kind of cool method of doing this at a great price as well. So I said yes. I did of course buy another method as well that I was actually in the first place going to look at. Uh, but there are pros to both of these and I'm definitely gonna be using this one for some of the options that we're gonna go over. So the brand that reached out to me is Pixelator. Now if you haven't heard of Pixelator, it was a Kickstarter campaign, actually reached its goals in about three hours if I'm not mistaken. And personally I had never heard of it until they reached out to me, which is kind of sad and also kind of surprising, I guess. They reached out to me, they sent me this package, and so I've been playing with it the past several weeks uh, in addition to another option that I bought to kind of test the differences and what I like and don't like about each one and make sure I'm getting kind of the best results that I can from my setup. So let's go over the Pixelator. The Pixelator comes in at about 40 bucks, and then if you wanna buy additional accessories to kind of do more options, you can do that as well. With that, you have the option to scan 35 mil, 120 mil, and then of course you can also scan four by five sheet film, which is a lot with, that's the just the basic setup. No extras needed, that's just with what you get. 
So that is by far more than you're gonna get with any other of these setups. And if you go spend more money on the higher end versions, you're gonna have to not only buy a 35 millimeter setup, but you'll probably also have to buy a medium format setup as well. And then if you wanna do things like borders or sprocket holes, usually you have to buy an additional setup for that if it's even an option. So those costs can add up rather quickly. Now you do have to get an additional setup if you wanna do sprockets or borders with this, uh, but right out of the gate, being able to shoot 35 mil, 120 mil, and four x five sheet them all at once is a great option. Also, with that, you're not limited in the size of your negative. If you're shooting a regular 35 millimeter frame, you're good. If you're shooting a panoramic 35 millimeter frame, you're good, meaning you're not gonna have to shoot two or three different pictures. You have that all in one frame. There's no border, no lockouts, nothing that you have to worry about cropping your image. Same with 120. If you have a six by six, six by seven, or six by nine, it's all covered in that same holder. You don't have to worry about adjusting it or taking multiple shots. Obviously, if you're DLSLR scanning, you're probably gonna wanna take more than one or two shots for medium format, so you would back up the camera and adjust things like that. But if you just wanna push the camera away and take that all in one shot, you have that option. It's very quick, easy to do that. So I guess the best way to describe this for me is it's like Legos. Uh, you have these different pieces and they fit together in just a certain way to give you different frame sizes depending on what you're trying to shoot. So having that flexibility, I can go from shooting 35 to 120 in a matter of a minute, maybe two minutes, depending on how long it takes me to assemble that. First, you have your diffusion plate, which is just this right here. It also has kind of a light, almost matte texture to it to prevent you from getting any like Newton rings when you're scanning your film, which is definitely a good thing, not something you want. And just with this, I have four little rubber legs on the bottom of these, and then of course, little slots, and this tab here, which we'll get into as well. So that is very flat, very straight, and I like the material that it's made of. I was concerned at first that this was all gonna be 3D printed, uh, and it's not. There are additions that you can get 3D printed, which is cool because it gives you more flexibility, but they're not essential parts that are going to affect how your film is scanned, if that makes sense. Uh, they're just to reframe different sizes and stuff for scanning the negative, but your base plate, your base frame, this is from a mold, uh, at least from what I can tell, what I know about plastics and things like that. So the, one of the things I had concerns with, uh, with this frame, is that it does get a little bit of a bend to it here in the center. But that's not a big deal because this is the top frame. This is what I would really be concerned with if there's a bend in here. But since this is flat, it's sturdy, it's a different material, of course, than this. It's a nice solid foundation and it's gonna keep that film flat, which is good. That was one of my concerns. This having a little bend isn't a big deal because uh, the frame underneath it still has everything it needs to kind of sit perfectly level on top of the diffuser. So if you get this and you notice that, don't be concerned because that's not gonna affect your negatives. It's got little legs on this that kind of sit perfectly on the diffuser so that won't give your image a bend at all. So a few of my negatives with this method. Uh, first of all, how close the diffuser is to your actual light source. Now granted, I could probably rig some sort of platform to lift it up by about an inch if I wanted to, to get it to the right level to uh, where I want to prevent any sort of vignetting or things like that. But out of the box, being right on top of your light source, tendency is to have a little bit of vignetting. Is it noticeable or is it gonna affect your image? Uh, you won't really notice it, I wouldn't think, uh, depending on if you set up your camera properly. And usually you can adjust to make it differently. Uh, but so that was the first negative. The second negative I have with this uh, is more so for the fact that I plan on doing a lot more film. You wanna cut down as much time as you can when scanning your negatives, at least if you're gonna be doing a lot of film. To transition over to the next negative, you have to hold down the base plate and push the tab on top and then pull your film through with the other hand to the next negative and then push down again to secure that negative in your frame. So the issues with that is it's of course a little time consuming and also when you lift that frame up and push that tab, uh, the negatives can misalign and so then you have to kind of straighten it out just a little bit to get it in the right spot again. Not always, but it is a normal occurrence from my experience to have that negative shift around a little bit. And so one of the things that I want to cut down on is my time of cropping these in post. If you 
know what you're doing with DLR scanning, you know it takes a long time. If you have 36 negatives and they're not lined up at all, you're cropping every single one of those negatives individually. You can get a rough estimate, but then you have to kind of go in and fine tune it, which takes a lot of time. Another thing that I really liked about this process is you have the option to buy this little uh, screen or frame, I guess, to block out any additional light outside of the pixelator frame. You want to remove any light except for what's coming through that negative. Granted, you could probably find some sort of foam pad and cut it out yourself, um, but this is already cut to exactly the size and fits perfectly. So if you're looking for a very budget option to scan your film with a lot of variety, this is a fantastic option at $40. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to find something with as much flexibility and versatility as this. Also, you can additionally get 3D printed parts to, again, include sprockets or include your borders for 120. And there's several other different 3D printed parts you can add on, or I think you have the option to print some yourself to make this a very versatile system to get what results you want. One of the next cheapest options uh, that I've been able to come across is the Essential Film Folder. If you go to their website, you'll see what I'm talking about with diffusion and the distance between your light source. It's very informative if you wanna get in depth like that. It just comes down to how fine tuned you want something to be. If you wanna spend you know, $1,000 and get 100% the best negative scans you can get, you can do that. Or you could spend 100 bucks, 150 bucks, and get 90% of the best scans possible. Or you can spend even less and get 80, 85% of those scans with a very inexpensive setup. It just depends on how much you wanna put in post. With the Essential Film Holder, you do have the option to pull your film through a little bit easier. Uh, you're not holding something down and lifting up and then pulling to the next negative. You just kinda of hold it down and pull and you're good to go. And it's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to keep things aligned and just switch your negative constantly. And I'm looking at possibly putting some sort of frame together so that I can just pull with one hand and have that negative switch without having to touch anything else so I can constantly keep shooting with the camera. That would be the ideal setup. But again, with that format, I'm only able to get 35 mil and then I had to buy an additional frame to get my 120 mil. And if I want to shoot with sprockets or with frames, I'm gonna have to order an additional frame for that, which I have to do with this as well. Uh, but that just adds to the complication of swapping those out depending on what I want. So for things like shooting with sprocket holes or four by five sheet film, uh, this is definitely gonna be my go-to and it's gonna be quick and easy to do that. I don't think you can go wrong with either setup. Uh, again, the one thing that I'm gonna be looking for is vignetting, which isn't too bad to fix in post. I am curious about the diffusion between the two. There was a lot of information on the diffuser from the essential film holder, not as much with this pixelator one. The biggest thing though that you need to worry about with any of this is your light source. Having a good, consistent, clean light source that's not gonna give you hot spots, that's gonna give you the right color profile, the right CRI, all of that stuff. If you have a good one of those, it's gonna help out a lot no matter which film scanning method you go with. It also does come with legs if you wanna lift it and shoot through some sort of light source or lamp or cell phone or anything like that, which personally I would recommend. But if you're going for a budget option, maybe you're also just going for some very budget basic scans. So you wanna do that with your phone or a smaller camera setup or something like that. So again, I can definitely say that if you wanna get the most bang for your buck and the most versatility and variety with your film scanning setup, uh, definitely check out the Pixelator, look up their reviews, look up all the insights on that and consider that as an option. If you have any questions on this or any of my other film scanning, film developing setups, be sure to leave that in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.